Let's take an example here that's a little different uh, that would show how uh, choosing different directions for uh, axes that you have choices with would change your DH parameters accordingly. So for this example, uh, for the shown non-planar 3R manipulator, demonstrate the non-uniqueness of frame assignments and the corresponding DH parameters for the two possible choices of Z2 axis direction uh, and the two possible choices for X1 axis direction. Okay, And this is my robotic arm that we have right here. We have uh, three revolute joints. This is the first revolute joint, second revolute joint, and third revolute joint. We have the length here between this axis and this line as L1 and then between this axis and this axis as L2. Uh, and then my uh, gripper is right here at this point, and this is here attached to the ground. Now another way to draw this robot um, in a different way in a chart, uh, eliminating all um, the physical uh, bodies, uh, we can indicate the ground in this line here, and then we have the first joint, and then 90 degrees to that first joint, we have the second joint, revolute joint, and then parallel to that second joint, we have a third joint. And you can see the parallel lines here. And then from here, 90 degrees, we have our gripper. So this indicates the same robot as we see right here. Okay. So we're going to show how the DH parameters will be different when we choose different directions for Z2 axes and different directions for X1 axes. To start solving this problem here, I just put the quick reference here for me to uh, show you how we can extract the DH parameters. And we're going to start here with the first choice. Um, I already put here Z1 uh, as the angle of or axis of rotation for theta1 and Z2 as the axis of rotation for theta2. And then X1 is the common perpendicular between Z1 and Z2. Both of them intersect. So the common perpendicular is here. And then for x2, it's the common perpendicular between z2 and z3, which would be right here. And x2 is pointing towards z3. Okay. And then both y1 and y2 are according to the right hand rule. Now for each one of these cases, I indicated here the dh parameters. So let's look through them for a1. If I'm looking at A1, I'll be looking at Z1 and Z2 along X1. Okay, this is Z1, this is Z2 along X1. As you can see, Z1 and Z2 intersect, so the distance between them along uh, X1 would be zero. So that's why A here is zero. For A2, I'll be looking at Z2 and Z3 along X, X, uh, uh, X2. Okay, so this is uh, Z2, and this would be Z3, and the distance between them along X2 was L2. Okay, that's why we have L2 right here, which is the distance from this uh, joint to this joint. All right. Now for the alphas, uh, for alpha one, I'll be looking at Z1 and Z2 about X1. This is Z1, and this is Z2 and I'm looking at the angle between them about x1. So to find the angle between them about x1, I'll put my thumb towards x1 and my four fingers towards z1. And then to go to z2 with my four fingers, I'll have to go negative 90 degrees from z1 to z2 when my thumb is pointing towards the positive x1. Okay, so that's why here alpha 1 is negative 90 degrees. For alpha 2, I'll be looking at Z2 and Z3 about X2. This is my Z2 and this is my Z3 and I'm looking at the angle between them about X2 which is right here. Obviously they are both pointing towards the same direction so the angle between them about X2 is 0. So that's why we have alpha 2 here equals to 0. Now for D1, D1 is uh, the distance, as you can see, the distance between x0 and x1 along z1. Uh, x0 is not drawn here, but we can assume that it's the same as x1, right? And the, and the distance between x1 and x0 
uh, along z1, which is right here, would be 0. So we put this as 0. All right. And then for, d for d2, we're looking at x1 and x2 along z2. This is x1, and this is x2 along z2. Okay, so along this line here, the distance between x1 and x2 is this distance right here, and that distance was indicated in the example as L1. So d2 equals to L1. Now let's look at theta2. Theta2 here is the angle between x1 and x2 about z2. This is my x1, and this is my x2, and I want to find the angle between them about z2. Okay, the way it's drawn right now, of course, obviously, usually it's a it's a, a variable, but the way it's drawn right now at this particular moment, the angle seems to be negative 90 degrees. If my thumb is pointing towards z2, and my four fingers pointing towards x1, to go from x1 to x2 about z2, I'll have to go negative 90 degrees about z2. Okay. So that's one way to do this when z2 is assigned to the right side right here. Now we have the option to assign z2 to the opposite direction. Okay, instead of going to the right, we can take it to the left. So if we do that, this is z2 now, instead of going to the right as it was here, now it's going to the left. And that would definitely affect my dh parameters. So let's look at the ones that are different. For example, alpha one here. So alpha one, uh, we should be looking at z1 and z2 about x1, all right? This is z1 and this is z2, and we're looking at this angle about x1, which is right here. So if I put my thumb along x1 and my four fingers along z1, then to go from z1 to z2, I'll have to go positive 90 degrees. That's why this became positive as opposed uh, to negative that was right here. Okay, uh, another thing that was affected is d2. So if you look here, d2 is the distance between x1 and x2 along z2. This is x1 and this is x2. Okay, so obviously the distance between them along z2, remember we're always going from the lower number to the higher number. So we have to go from x1 to x2 along z2. To go from x1 to x2 along z2, we'll have to go to the opposite direction of where z2 is going. Okay, so this length from here to here becomes negative L1 because we're going from x1 to x2 along the de negative direction of z2. All right, now let's look at theta2 here. Theta2 is the angle between x1 and x2 about z2. All right, so if you look here, this is x1 right here, and this is x2 right here, and we're looking at the angle between them about z2, which is right here. So if I put my thumb towards z2 and my four fingers towards x1, to go from x1 to x2, I'll have to move my fingers, my four fingers, 90 degrees positive. So that's why we have 90 degrees positive here, as opposed to negative right here. So just by changing this, z from pointing towards the right direction and making it pointing towards the uh, left direction you can see how these dh parameters changed changed accordingly all right now similar to this if i look back at this picture again i can see that i can also choose my z1 to be either upwards or downwards okay so let's see the difference between this figure and if I choose my z1 to be downwards. Okay, obviously if my z1, uh, I'm sorry, no, I'm not talking about z1, I'm talking about x1. So if my x1 is pointing uh, this direction, remember x1 is the common perpendicular between z1 and z2. So since they both intersect, uh, the direction of x1 can be either this direction or that direction, all right? Uh, if they don't intersect, then x1 has to be pointing towards z2. But this case, they intersect, so we have the option of putting it x1 this direction or x1 the opposite direction right here. Okay, so in this case, you can see again, there's a difference here in alpha 1. 
and there's also a difference in uh, theta 2 as you can see right here okay now for this case when x1 is this in this direction and z2 in this direction if we flip z2 to the opposite direction that would be a fourth case so x1 in this direction and z2 in this direction now the difference again you can see the difference between this case and this case in this difference we have only x1 as changed or this case and this case in this case we have x1 changed and z2 changed or this case and this case we have x1 changed from here to here when z2 is still the same okay so the difference between two here are alpha 1 became negative and d2 became uh, stayed negative between these two but then theta 2 became negative from here to here so just having different choices when you have choices of directions for these axes it reflects on your dh parameters as you can see right here